Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you with us. One of the things I love about being a mixed media artist is that it gives me a lot of flexibility in the materials and the tools that I choose to create all sorts of interesting visual imagery. One of the things I love about working with acrylic paints is that there's a lot of things we can do with it, but one of the things I don't like about working with paint is its lack of flexibility. What do I mean by this? Well, if I take my paintbrush and some paint and I make a mark on my canvas or a piece of paper, it's pretty much there, right? It is what it is. I can't look at it later and say, hmm, you know, it'd be great if I could just move that over an inch or so, it would really balance things off a little more differently. So there's a lot of things that paint can do for us, but unless we are willing to make several iterations, we may not get what we want to do the first try. Now, I want to talk a little about this today because I want to share with you a methodology that you might find interesting and useful for how to create a little bit more flexibility in some of your painted works. Now, in order to do this, I had to kind of think a little bit outside the box. And what I have in front of me here is a cooking sheet. This is right. This is a cookie tray and it is a silicon cookie tray. But what I was able to do here is I was able to put my paint on the tray and I tried a bunch of different experiments here. Again, working with acrylic paints. I have some that have been poured. I have some that have been spread on with a brush. Some I put on with a palette knife. But the bottom line simply was to be able to create something that as a piece of paint, if you will, it already exists in whole. And if I come in here and let me just get my fingernail underneath and I pick this thing up, I now have a tangible piece of paint. And if I come and take a piece of paper, I can now stick that down on that piece of paper and I can position it wherever I want that paint to be. So in this sense, paint almost becomes almost like a collage element, a piece of paper, something we can cut out and position and move around. Now, like I mentioned, I have different approaches here. This one here is more of a poured look. So I, I basically just poured some paint onto this cookie sheet and it creates a much flatter, in this sense, it's much glossier paint as well. Let's grab one of these just because uh, we're here. And again, there's a, there are a couple of different choices in here. And depending upon what I'm trying to do and my, what my end goal is, I can really have a lot of fun just saying, hmm, what would it look like if I wanted to kind of move these around? I got another second purple one here. What if I bring this down here? Again, it looks like I just took some paint and put it on the paper. And I'll take uh, one of these yellow-orange ones, put it there, and uh, I'll grab this guy. Now, this guy is mostly... Uh, modeling compound yeah it's a lot of a lot of different techniques trying a whole bunch of different things so much of what i find in art is really almost like working in a laboratory and you're like hey what happens if we try this now the thing about these pieces of paint great while they are tangible in, in the sense they're not necessarily something that we can you know just drop on a piece of paper and there it is so i might have to help it out and i'm going to use a, some uh, some matte medium here i have some paint medium and if you're not familiar with paint medium acrylic paint medium it's basically like paint without any pigment in it so when it dries it dries transparent in most cases now no one's ever going to see this because i'm going to use it in essence almost like a, a spot of glue that i'm going to put in the back here let me uh, just get a little bit here in my ram again. Don't need too, too much. And I'm going to just use a standard paintbrush in this case. And I'm going to dab it and uh, put a little bit on the back of each of my different elements of paint. I don't even need to cover the whole thing. Just enough to glue it down, give it some sort of adhesive qualities. And uh, again, if I want to make sure that nothing peels up, I, want to, I will want to get close to the edges. But uh, for the most part, I'm just using it almost like an adhesive sort of a white glue or something like that. Oh, a little hard to manage with your fingers all. Try not to get glue all over yourself or paint all over yourself, but invariably it's going to happen. And the beautiful thing is now, when I put this down, is it's going to allow me to, uh, again, position it where I want to put it, and it's going to stay put. It's going to stay put. So, anyway, this is kind of a fun part of what we can do, and again, working on kind of a bigger piece where we can take these different paint blobs or drips or however we want to really position things. We have a lot of flexibility. So what I want to do with this project is I want to be able to set some things up. And again, this is more of a proof of concept to share with you folks today as to what can be done. What I will do, grab around here, I have a second cookie sheet. I just want to show you some of my methodologies for putting this stuff down here. Now what I want to work with here is some fairly heavy bodied paints. And so it depends on the different brands. The basic brands are kind of a mid-range where they're somewhat heavy. 
And for this particular project, I just want to go with something that's somewhat heavy. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to leave a, a little bit of a, a drip, if I will, right there. And I uh, leave a couple of them. That's going to work out for if I'm making more than one element that I want to work with here. And then simply, I'm just going to grab a paintbrush here. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of just pat it into the shape that I want. And I'm going to go for the relief. I want this to be something that kind of rises up off the off the paper or off the canvas, if that's how I'm using it. So again, I'm creating these kind of uh, almost, and we'll call them decals, right? Kind of almost a, a thing that I've created that I can then reposition and put wherever I want in the future. And so I have a lot of flexibility here on the shapes that I use and the textures that I use and of course the colors that I use. And now, as this dries, it will also settle down a little bit as the moisture comes out of it. It won't be as, as, as tall, as much relief, but we can kind of play around with it. And again, you can create these different shapes. Now, what I did previously when I was working on these other pieces over here is I waited for it to dry and then put a secondary color on it because I just think it, it just lends to what I was doing. It just was kind of an interesting abstract art element, and it just gives you a lot of flexibility and, uh, you know, what things are going to look like here. So again, I think there's some fun things that we can do with this. And I'm going to just set mine up to be able to create a, a number of things. I'm going to probably use both these cookie sheets. And the, the, the target is to create something that's going to allow me to take an 18 by 24 inch sheet of heavy duty watercolor paper or, or mixed media paper of some sort and be able to kind of reposition these elements on and just, again, create an abstract pattern using these paint blobs in a way that frankly would be incredibly difficult to do if I were just painting straight on to the piece of paper. So that is the overall goal here. So I'm going to get to that and uh, when I come back I'm going to show you how I'm going to position this. By the way, I'll just share with you, it can take a, a while for the paint to dry. It may not be the kind of thing you get to exactly that day, maybe something that happens a day or two later in the future. So who knows, it, it, it may be something I'll talk to you in a few days and I'll show you what this is turned into. All right, welcome back. Now it's actually the next day because, you know, as you might imagine, it takes a while for blobs of paint like these to, uh, to dry to a point where we can work with them. And I also went back into each one of these blobs and I gave it a secondary color, as a dot of color you can see here. Uh, and truth, some of these are still a little wet. There's still some soft spots, so I'm gonna try to work around those best I can. But what I wanna be able to do now is, again, use this paint, unlike if we were painting on a piece of paper and we said, hmm, how is this gonna look? You can't change your mind later. And now, because I actually have something that I can pick up and move around, I can change my mind. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start unloading some of these colors onto my paper here. And uh, we'll just kinda of put them in rows and we'll get a sense of what's gonna happen with these. Let me pull this down a little bit more so you can see. There we go, I'm kinda, of just gonna make some rows. Just get some elements in here that I can work with. And hopefully uh, most of these are dry enough to work with. I have found a few of them that are just still a little a little soft. And so it makes sense to wait as long as you can before you work with these things unless you want to accidentally smear paint on what you're working on, which I don't. I really don't. Um, I will also mention that if you let these sit around for too long, a couple weeks, they start to get brittle. And it's a different kind of scenario when you work with them. I like them when they're kind of soft and flexible like they are now. It's kind of a plus. And uh, there we go. So how many, uh, we got about eight going across. There's no right answer. What I'm thinking I want to be able to do is kind of just create kind of, you know, blobs of color that we can stack on our piece of paper here. Now again, this is just kind of a preliminary look at what we can do here. Um, I'm thinking that about eight across and uh, five rows of eight will work really nicely here. And again, the objective here is to create something that is an abstract art piece that is unique, visually interesting, which I think this qualifies as, and uh, allows us to create something that we can mount on our piece of paper here. I know, just move some colors around here just to make things a little bit tighter. And again, once you've got the pieces where you pretty much want them to be, it's a matter of making it more of a permanent fixture. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a small paintbrush 
and we're going to use some liquid medium. This is a matte medium. It doesn't really matter what it is because we're not going to see it. This is what we're going to be using, in essence, as the glue to glue our pieces of paint down. Yeah, not a phrase you get to use every day. So let me uh, get some of this into the wham again. It's something of beauty. So I'm going to go through and finish this up. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you what the results are. All right, welcome back. So I've had an opportunity to reposition my, uh, my paint blobs, as it were, and uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay, it's a, it, it's a very unique piece. I've never personally created anything like this before, and it's kind of fun to see the results. And again, you know, what I'm working with here is kind of some rough paint blobs, and how they dry is going to be unique to the paint. I did try working with some portable paints um, a while back, and they create a, a, an interesting looking puddle, basically. It's much smoother, and that might be the kind of thing that really works for a project as well. You can kind of create these, uh, these different blobs and, and puddles and, and combine them like we've combined things here. But I really like the colors of combination. I like the fact that there's some texture. And I will mention that, they're, you know, these are raised a little bit. There is some relief on these. So this might not require the same kind of framing where it's pushed up against some glass. This might not even require glass at all if we think about it. And the ability to have these, uh, these guys kind of poke out and be part of the, uh, the decor of a room. But I'm happy with how this turned out. I'm going to take this one and put it up on the... Uh, I'm going to put it in the gallery. So you guys, if you want to take a peek at it, see what's up there, please go to SpectivaStudios.com. That's where all the stuff that we create ends up in uh, my gallery there. You can take a look at it there. And uh, again, I want to thank you all for being here. If you're still with me at the end, it's always like the diehards, right? The people who are really paying attention. And again, we're here to just provide you with some insights and ideas and an opportunity to play along if you want to do just that. We'd love to be able to create these videos and share them with you. And by the way, if you're not a subscriber yet, we encourage you to do so. Just hit that subscribe button. And hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified. We drop a video every single Friday morning. And if you hit that thumbs up for us, that'd be fantastic because that tells YouTube that you like what you're seeing and they'll share our videos with more people. We'd love to have that happen as well. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. I hope this was fun for you. And let's do this again real soon.